Hi students. In this video, I want to go over setting up SOLIDWORKS to do your first assemblies and then the creation of a simple assembly example. So let's begin. First, I'm going to click on New and I'm going to go back to the tutorial. And I'll click on Assembly. I'll say OK. SOLIDWORKS is asking me what components I want to bring in. Well, we're going to do the setup first. We're just going to create a template. So I don't want any components brought in. I'll hit Cancel and X out of Begin Assembly. Notice that this screen is very much like your initial blank part creation screen. So let's turn on our planes. I'm right clicking, hitting Show to turn the planes on. The planes are not active, so I have to go under View, Hide and Show. I'm going to turn on Axes, and I'm going to turn on Planes. That looks good. Now, I still don't have any axes, so we have to create them. We'll go under Reference Geometry and Axes. Choose the top and front. Say OK. Make another axis using the right and top. I'll say OK. Then I'll create one final axis using the front and right planes. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now let's go in and take care of our units. We'll go under Document Properties, Units. Make sure IPS is selected. And under Detailing, we'll make sure that Cosmetic Threads and Shaded Cosmetic Threads are turned on. And lastly, under Dimensions, make sure your primary precision is three places. And we'll say OK. Now I'm going to save this part as a template. File, Save As. And we'll say Assembly Templates. I'm going to go over to the folder where I keep all of my custom SOLIDWORKS templates. In this case, I have it under SOLIDWORKS Templates 2018. And I'm going to call it My Assembly Template and save it. Now, this is very important. I do not want to begin drawing at this point. I want to close it, and I want to create a new part. I'm going to come under my Templates folder. Notice my assembly template is available, so I'm going to pick it. Uh, again, SOLIDWORKS is asking, what's the initial components that I want to bring in? This time, we're actually going to do a layout, so let's go under Downloads. I want part four. I'll drop in one of those. And I also want to drop in a nut to put on that bolt. That'll be our first simple assembly. A nut and a bolt. Next, I want to bring your attention to this little F symbol right here. When you bring in the first component in SOLIDWORKS, it automatically comes in fixed. Notice that if I click on the nut, I should be able to drag that all around. I clicked on the edge, and I can just slide it around and reposition it. If I try that same trick with the bolt, it doesn't work. It's fixed in space. For the sake of this class, what I want you to do Whenever you bring in the first component, I want you to right click and say float. And we're going to mate this component to the initial planes and axes. And there's a very simple reason for this. By mating the first component to the initial planes and axes, we ensure that the part comes in either vertical or square. You know, we make sure that it's not skewed off at some strange angle. 
if that were to happen and you go to make a drawing, then you're going to try to dimension things and it's going to create all these weird angular dimensions by default. It's going to be really, really hard to dimension. So let's make sure everything is vertical and square when we begin our layout. The way we position components in an assembly is something called mates. Okay. So when I click the mate button, here's the dialog. Notice that these are very, very similar to geometric relations from sketching. We have coincident, parallel, perpendicular, concentric, distance, angle, all that good stuff. So now that I've floated the initial bolt, I want to place this right on the vertical axis. So I'll choose the cylindrical face of the bolt. And I'll choose axis 3, my vertical axis. Once I make those two choices, here are all the options for doing the mates. I can say coincident, parallel, perpendicular. SolidWorks chooses the most likely default for the picks you've made. In this case, uh, it's saying coincident, or excuse me, concentric. So sure, let's run with that. I'll say OK. If I come over here, oops, I'm still in the command, sorry. If I come over, notice that I stay on the axis, but I can drag that bolt and I can rotate that bolt because I've only constrained one degree of freedom. Let's finish constraining this bolt so that it's fixed in space. I think I'll choose the top of the bolt. I'm going to mate it to the top plane. Now SolidWorks is saying the most likely option is coincident. But you know, maybe I want it at a distance. So let's try that option. I'll come down. And I'm going to set it at a distance of one inch. Say OK. Say OK. So now, all I can do is rotate it. Now let's fix the rotation in space. I'll do another mate. I think I will choose that face. Oops, I got an edge by accident. Choose the face, the right plane. This time I think I'll set the angle. Make it a little trivial, but I'll set it at an angle of zero. I could have also used parallel, that would have worked fine. And I'll say OK. Now, when I come back to the part manager, notice the little minus sign went away. That says that the part is fully constrained in space. It can neither move nor rotate. Once I get the first part fully constrained, I generally like to turn off all these planes and axes so that my picking becomes easier. I'm going to go under View, Hide and Show. I'll turn off the axes and turn off the planes. And now I can just mate with faces and edges. Makes things a whole lot easier. So again, I'm going to choose Mate. Choose the cylindrical face of the nut. The cylindrical face of the bolt. It's choosing concentric. So sure, OK, I like that. Let's set the distance between the underside of the head and the nut face. Well, because I can't see it, I'm going to do another select other. I could rotate it around, but this is a good example of select other. So I've chosen the face. I'll choose the face of the nut. SolidWorks is suggesting coincident. That doesn't make sense in this case because I'm above the thread. So let's do at a distance. 
and I think I'll go two and a quarter inches. Very nice. Oh, a little weird video stuff going on there. Let's make sure that our mate was applied. So all of the mates that you apply in the assembly are available under the mates tab in the part manager. So here's our initial concentric, distance, angle, concentricity. Looks like for whatever reason, my distance wasn't applied. Let's do it again. I'll click on mate. I'll do a select other to get that underside face. Face of the bolt, distance. I can also come over here and type it in. So I'll say 2.25 inches. Press enter. Green check. Now I see my distance. Okay, so that was properly applied. Again, the only thing left that I can do is rotate. So let's align this face and this face. I'll use a mate, choose the face, the other face, I'll say parallel. Now the faces are parallel to each other. And again, for 005, the minus sign has gone away, so the nut is fully constrained. And at this point, I could just keep on adding components and building up my assembly. So it's the same thing. I just say insert, component, existing part. I could add another nut. Notice it comes in without the planes and axes on. So when I go to position it, I can simply mate it. So that concentricity was made. Okay. Mate those two faces. Make them parallel. Maybe I'll set the distance between the two of them. And that's how you do simple assemblies in SolidWorks. Thank you for watching.